In this video, I'm sharing 9 epic tips that you probably didn't know about in Duma Fusion. These include fun effects, hidden up settings for smoother editing, to transitions like this with just one tap. Stick around because I'm going to show you how to get these exact same transitions and use them in your own videos. I've used LumaFusion professionally for the last four years and even worked with global brands like TikTok, all from just my iPad. I'm confident that some of these tips will improve your own video editing experience as well as improve your skills inside of LumaFusion. All right, let's start with something fun, drop shadows. When you add an image, the slow way to add a drop shadow is to add a square behind it, apply a blur. This works, but you can skip this step completely by adding a title instead. Delete the text, add an image. I'll use a photo of my cat from yesterday as an example. Then you can scroll down in the clip editor and add a drop shadow. Tweak the shadow color, opacity, shadow angle, distance and blur to your liking. The best thing about this is that the image doesn't have to be a square. It also works for circular emojis and any kind of PNG photos. It retains the shape of the image, which is super helpful. Number two is replicating motions. Let's say you're creating a video where you want to redo a motion multiple times, like bring a photo in the same way. There's an instant way to do this. So you can copy the images where you've already applied keyframes and then bring a new photo, hover it over the original photo. When you get near the first frame, a yellow outline appears. You can drop the photo and it will retain the information and then move in the same way. This saves you time as you don't have to redo the keyframe every time and also utilize your previous work. This is not just for keyframe motions. This also works with crop, zooms, color. Quick note on this one. If the image you're bringing in is slightly longer or shorter than the original image, you'll have three options. Select the top option, replace clip, keep timeline duration, and now this will work as intended. Next one is text adjustment. When you add a text, the text layer is always the same font. But what if you wanted to adjust the font and color of just one word? The standard method only allows you to change the whole sentence. But here's what you can do if you want to change just one word. Select one or two words, and using these three icons, you can adjust the font, the color, the size, whilst also keeping a part of just one text layer. Number four is the wobble effect. This effect is done with just one tap. You only have to set it up once on one clip, then you can instantly add it to any image or video after that. It adds motion to static images or mimics camera movement for tripod shots. For example, this clip with this person enjoying the noodles has no camera movement. We can spice it up. In frame and fit, increase the video size to about 110%, add a keyframe at the beginning, and for every half a second, slide the images left, slide it right, up, down, etc. Ensuring it's in a slightly new position every half a second. LumaFusion will automatically add the keyframe and you can look back. If anything looks slightly too exaggerated, you can adjust that specific keyframe to make it look better. Then go between the keyframes and select slow in and out between every keyframe. I'm really hoping they add a feature for ease all keyframes, but for now we have to do it manually. After you're done, this is the important bit. You can save it, give it a name, and now you have a wobble preset in your library forever. You can apply it to other videos and also other images without even leaving the timeline like this. Click this icon and select the preset you've just created. It really makes icons look a lot more dynamic, but it can also make videos look much cooler. Number five is the word by word text effect. If you're on TikTok a lot, you've definitely seen this effect. One of the first people to make this trendy was Stephen Bartlett, someone I've worked with previously. He is an example of one of his videos. We are social animals. Of course it's hurting us. I'm going to show you how to do this inside of LumaFusion. In this video, I'm going to take you through the 10 books which have most impacted my life. This effect is fun. You want to add a title, and this one title will include the whole pop-up text animation. You need some idea of where the speaker is positioned and how you want to frame it, but other than that, you can get really creative. I don't have any set rules for a layout for the text. In fact, the more unaligned it is, the better it can look. Heavier fonts work well. You can also change the weight of the font and mix fonts to make the text graphic for this effect. You can add as many layers of text as you want to fill up that speech. What's happening, people? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to take you through the 10 books which have most impacted my life. We've got eight which are personal development books and two which are real life stories. After you're done, this is the slightly trickier part. You need to crop every word and add a keyframe as it's spoken. This is why it's also important to consider the cropping as you're creating the graphic, but you'll get better with this with time. So crop the first word, add a keyframe as the second word is spoken. In this one frame later, uncrop it to the next word and repeat this for every new word that is spoken. In this video,
It does take a bit of effort, but this is something you do for a special moment or an intro, not the whole video. My life. And the final result is definitely worth it. So this is what I've cooked up for this example. In this video, I'm going to take you through the 10 books which have most impacted my life. Okay, it's almost time for the epic one tap transitions, but quickly, these next three tips are more for making the editing experience better or workflow tips. Number six, sound library. This is one of my favorite things about LumaFusion. If you have a folder with sound effects, you will enjoy this. If you don't, I'd recommend making a folder and putting in sound effects that you frequently use in there. So you have a folder with your sounds, tap the top left of LumaFusion, select add link to folder and open the correct folder. Once it's inside LumaFusion, you can use the search icon and search for any sound effects and it'll be right there. This isn't just for sound effects though. If you have clips titled correctly, this also works for videos. I have a random photo where I put videos that I frequently use and title them correctly so I can find it in one search. For example, I want to add a confetti with a popping sound effect. I go in here, search for confetti, find a confetti clip that I want to use. And then to go with that, I also want to add a pop sound effect, which I search for again and it's also just there. Now, even though these are linked to different folders, because these different folders are linked to LumaFusion, you'll be able to find them easily. Number seven is the eye icon. Okay, so this is one I've never seen anyone mention before, but I'd say for 75% of any issues you face while editing, turning this icon on and off fixes it. Things like play errors, misaligned audio, always tap the eye icon off, turn it back on before you refresh the app. This is much quicker. Just to showcase this in action here, there's a loading bar that's just there and it's annoying. I can fix this by refreshing the app, but also when I tap the eye icon off and on, it's instantly fixed. So yeah, I'd recommend trying this one before refreshing the app. Number eight is a hidden setting. So I've had the issue of pressing play, but the video not responding on big projects for a very long time. Now I only found out about this last month from support, but this can be fixed with one setting. First, here's an example. On a really big project, if I move around the timeline and then press play, it can take seven to 10 seconds before it plays. Here we go. But once I turn on this setting, it's infinitely better. Go to settings, help, and turn on the reset player on pause. I don't know what this setting does, but it makes playback much faster when I press play on big projects. In the same project, now it responds to pressing play almost instantly. So my recommendation would be to just turn this setting on no matter who you are, and somewhere down the line, this setting will help you. Okay, it's time for the one tap transition. People always want more app transitions, but I believe overlay transitions are far more slick. Here are a few examples. Now, if you've used LumaFusion more often, you know how to do this with removing the background, etc. But here's a better way to do it in one tap. First, open frame and fit for any image or video, doesn't matter which. Select blend, screen, and tap this icon to save it as a preset. Give it a name too, like screen. Now you can get these kinds of overlays on video services like Motion Array or even through Storyblocks. These services will give you great overlay transitions, but an even better option is to search on YouTube. YouTube is underrated when it comes to searching for overlays. I've linked these two transitions that we're going to be using in the description. You can download them however you like and then save them into your library. Once you bring it into LumaFusion, select a segment of the clip and drag it on top of where you want the transition to occur. Tap preset, use emotions, and select your simple screen overlay preset that you've just created. You can duplicate this transitions and then place it in between another two clips for another new transition. And here you can use the slip trim tool to slide it and find another new segment from this video with multiple transitions to select the specific one that you want to use. Now this is an odd scenario where you're gonna have one video which has multiple transitions, but the simpler method is obviously downloading one singular clip, including the full transition from Storyblocks, for example, if we download this one, simply drag that over two clips, and then same again, select your overlay transition, tap preset, and apply the screen preset you've created earlier. You can also play with the speed of the clip if you think the transition should come in faster, slower, etc. So yeah, saving a screen preset and then applying your preset is the fastest way to do fun transitions inside the app. Now you may agree with me, but I think these look much better than the built-in transitions. 
And these are just some examples. You can go out and find more transitions like these from the Storyblocks, from Motion Array, if you have a subscription to that, or even YouTube. And do the same process and really elevate your videos. Okay, that is nine cool things in LumaFusion. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Comment how many of these tips are new to you. This is the first video on this new channel. I thought since I'm always creating content for clients, why not create content around some of the things I've personally learned over the last few years being an iPad only editor. So if that sounds interesting, feel free to hit subscribe and that will also indicate that you guys want more LumaFusion and iPad editing content.